This episode is brought to you by Park Power, a provider of electricity and natural gas in Alberta that offers low rates, awesome services, and profit sharing with local charities. <laughs> in Alberta, you get to choose where you buy your energy from. Park Power has low overhead and chances are you'll save money if you switch. You can find out how much money you'd save by visiting parkpower.ca and plugging your numbers into the Alberta Energy Savings Calculator. If you decide to switch, it's easy. Nothing changes about your service, only the price you pay. Learn more at parkpower.ca. Boop. Incredible. Incroyable. Okay. Incroyable. Oh, look at these look at cute this. cans. I thought it was nice. Pick something. Happy, Happy little, little brew. Yeah. Hold on. Let me finish this off. She's an IPA. Sweet I was can. stoked with this can right up yeah, until. Dude. I know. I know. It's an IPA. I'm not going to judge it until I put it in my mouth. I'm judging. And that's what she said. It's a conspiracy as part of the Alberta Podcast Network and is powered by ATB. What's going on? My name is Jacob. You should listen to Eat More Barbecue, a podcast about meat and so many laughs. Um, yo, I'm reading off a script here. Okay, that sounds great. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Eat More Barbecue, Meat Laughs Podcast. Um, episode two, The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to It's Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm your host, Andrew. I don't claim to be an expert on anything we're going to discuss today, blah, 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 blah. If you'd like to see what we dug up uh, for this episode, then check out our uh, episode description. Charlie slaves on that like someone out of a Charles Dickens novel. Did you hear that? It was a bing. There was a bing. Yeah. Who had their phone on? Yeah. He said, looking at his, ah. Oh. <laughs> Every time. Every mm-hmm. time. It never fails. Um, it if keeps you, getting funnier. <laughs> if you'd like to see what Charlie works so hard to put in the episode description, then uh, go check that out. Uh, yes, Charles Dickens. We work him like a Charles from Charles Dickens. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. That one didn't land. We're like, you do that, and then you get your bowl of gruel. And, please, yeah, sir, please have sir. some more after you're done loading the URLs. Hey, also, my favorite scene from Oliver Twist: the more <laughs> his face just turns like beet red. <clears throat> Joining me as always are my old pals, yep, <laughs> Charles the Charming, here I am, and Greg the Gorgeous. Hello. We uh, we have done. Three episodes tonight, so yeah, yeah a lot of drugs things, and, and just just <laughs> lines of coke. Yep, somebody put a toilet in the coke room. <laughs> That's we're just kidding. There's yeah. when that happens. Oh boy, <laughs> um, very very funny gentlemen no. will be presented with a few selected theories, and they will interject as they see fit. Boy, oh boy, it feels like it feels like we just did this. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to keep up to date on what we were up to here at It's Conspiracy, please check out our website, it's conspiracypodcast.com, and you can find links to our Twitter, run by the Irish Madman, Facebook, Instagram, that's run by Greg, email, and our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash it's a conspiracy. You can also find pictures of our podcast puppies, uh, Kylo and Ren. Pupcast. Yeah, they are they are so great and real. And we would show them to you in real life, but it's a big secret and we can't. So you just have to trust us. Oh, there's, there's Kylo oh, there. A couple there. Yep. Kylo, get back in your, in your apple crate. <laughs> Lie down. Lie down on your bed. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. What are you doing? Sorry, yeah. Um, well, you gotta, you gotta show that dog who's boss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a bit of a different episode because I'm going to present one theory <gasps> and then Charlie's going to present a second theory <gasps> and then we have a new segment. Ooh. I know it's exciting. Uh, okay. So Charlie with, with a yes or a no, can you tell me if you've heard of this theory? <gasps> Time traveler, John Titor. No. Oh. oh. No. Okay. Well, Greg just gave me the Dwayne Johnson eyebrow. Maybe. Boing. Ooh, nice segue. Yeah. Now, Andrew. Yes, sir. With a yes or a no. Tell me, have you heard of 
The Montreal Screw Job. I haven't. Uh, but is that the real name? The Screw Job? The Montreal Screw Job. Oh, that sounds amazing. I'm assuming this is some kind of porno thing. You have to see. Okay. You have to wait and find out. <laughs> Ooh, Google it. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, we might as well start off. Um, let's start off with our new segment. We might as well get it out of the way and we'll talk about what we're going to do here. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. We'll just right get it out of the way. Get it out of the bag. What are we testing? Theme time segment. We'll think of something better later on. What are we testing? Yeah. What are we testing? So what we're doing exactly is that we're all kind of take, picking a, a food product or item. And we're going to see how long it'll last. Mm-hmm. And by last, we mean like rot and decay. Yeah, and we want this shit to get gross. To get gross. So we have a, what do we have here from McDonald's? We got some McDonald's fries. Ooh, feels and like a double bacon cheese. Oh, yeah, that's a cheeseburger. Hi. Cheeseburger. You can have the cheeseburger. But not till the end of the season. <laughs> when it's gone rotten. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to have to wait a little while for that. And then I think we got, what are these? Well, Swiss rolls. Swiss rolls. Yeah. Little by Little Debbie. They look like, they look like ding-dongs. They were rolled by Little Debbie herself. They. We wanted to get uh, Twinkies, but apparently that's like They're contraband. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So They don't exist anymore. Yeah. Apparently not. And last but not least, we got some 7-Eleven apples, which will also <laughs> last through a nuclear explosion. I'm skeptical <clears throat> of the apples guys, here. But guys, yeah. this looks like a nice lunch. This does. <laughs> this does. <laughs> I am mind. fairly hungry and I'm kind of sad that we're not going to get to eat this. I also have more uh, Vegemite if you guys are hungry. No. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> No, we can send that back. Ooh, send it back. <laughs> to send a, it back over send the it border. Send it back to that country that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> send it back with Joel, jo- Jolene. Ian. Okay, so I, I guess the basic rules are that we're all going to pick our, our horse in this race. Mm-hmm. Back your horse. And whoever is correct at the end of the season wins a bottle of whiskey. That's right. It's yeah. the, the new whiskey, whiskey competition. And we might, competition. we might only be able to go as far as Christmas time. I don't know how fast this stuff is going to go rotten. Yeah, yeah, this is all going to be dependent yeah. well, okay, on which, so which goes Last man first. standing, right? Last man standing. So if, if two of the other ones are all gross and out of it, then we call it then. That's right. Before the end of the season. And the, uh, what I was going to suggest with this is the, 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 the test would be if it smells too bad to have in Charlie's man cave, then it's like that one's out, throw it away. And that's so that's going to be a bit of a problem there. Andy. there. It's going to, you're going to notice it. Oh yeah. I'm not going to notice it because ah. I don't have a sense of smell. I'm smell blind, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be able to shame you We're, again. <laughs> every day, every okay. time you're I just know. like, Oh, what smells in here? I won't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I never I, learned to smell. I, I had a shower. Earlier. Okay. So, so how do we do this then? We'll have to have someone periodically check in. Speaking of periods, hey. you, there is a lady in this house. Oh. Oh, we could talk to her. She could be our <laughs> referee in this. Maybe we should cut that part out. <laughs> let's cut that. that. that sorry. That's okay. your segue. No, that's, okay. Sorry. sorry. Clean take. Clean take. Speaking of uh, periods. We, I can think of someone. Uh... I just had an idea. <laughs> uh, we could use your. Don't, we don't could. You we could ask your. How yeah. about my loving wife? Your loving she wife. Say, don't you have a fantastic. wonderful woman in your life? Yeah. yeah, and and she has a fully working nose. Yes. Olfactory bulbs yeah. are all good to go. Olfactory okay. firing on ten. Yeah. So we'll say it's up to her if she's like that stinks. Out Get you go. It out. Okay. So then we throw okay. it in That's, the neighbor's lawn, and and we'll just leave it up to her. Yep. yep. Okay. That's the decision. Okay, so then I mean, I I'll think, try. I think the only other rule is is that it, it cannot stay in its already plastic container. No, of course not. No, it, it does not get to stay to pre-wrapped air. or yeah. It needs to be exposed to air for at least like a little moment and yep. then put into a container. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so yeah, we'll keep you guys updated uh, every episode on the episode. Yeah, we'll put pictures on the Instagram. Oh, running tally, uh, live cams. Uh, <laughs> Who are you? Who are you backing in this race here, Charlie? I got Swiss rolls. <laughs> Going with the Swiss rolls. Yep. yep. Damn, yep. son. I'm down with little Debbie. Okay. We go way back. Chocolate covered mistress. Uh, do I get to pick second? Is yeah, that you go okay. Right okay. Then I, I'm going to, I don't mean to jump in, but I'm positive. I, I know already that that McDonald's is going to outlast everything on here. And I, I hate to throw you under the bus with those apples. You're going to supersize it. That McDonald's is, is 100% going to win this decomposition See, uh, I don't think contest. you heard the first part of me describing these apples. Seven Eleven brand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> Irving, if you're from the East Coast, this could be. These might be like two years old already. Man. Exactly. You don't know. <laughs> this might not even be their original color. 
So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm a money. Oh, yeah, that's, that's that's yeah. How yeah. do you like, you like them apples? Oh, ah, you okay. Get it. And the winner gets a bottle of Greg's breakup whiskey. The, the bullet. <laughs> yeah, the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what are we calling this segment again? <clears throat> uh, oh, what are we testing? What are we testing? Okay, what are we testing? Subject number one: Time traveler John Titor. <laughs> That's his name. Uh, John Titor was an alleged time traveler from the year 2036 who shared detailed information about his time machine, his mission, his original timeline with forum users in the years 2000 and 2001. Have you guys heard of this before? Um, so here's, here's, a, here's a bit of brief uh, history on the guy. Um, okay, Charlie, do you like Art Bell? Don't yes. You know, yeah. Future history. This, this is an art bell centric theory. Ooh. Uh, next to George, the animal steel. He's your favorite guy. I mean, they're both pretty great. Okay. Do you like art bell more choose? than you like your grandpa? I hope your grandpa's not I dead. I'll feel my, bad. I wish, my, I wish art bell was my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I thought you were going to say, I wish my grandpa was still alive. I'd be like, Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, Okay. Maybe we shouldn't go down there. Anyways, <laughs> get to your point. In 1998, talk show host Art Bell uh, received two faxes from an ind- faxes. Wow, two faxes from an individual claiming to be an expert on time travel because he himself was a time traveling soldier from a distant future, and that's key. In the first fax, the sender at the time unnamed detailed the discovery of time travel uh, in the year 2034. He also claimed that there was something that that had happened for whatever reason, uh, and no one was able to travel to or beyond the year 2564. So he's like, you can go in the future, you can go in the past, but you can't go past 2564. Now, whose voice is that? That's uh, the time travel. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Actually, no, here, let's give him, we'll, we'll, we'll find his voice here as we go. Um, the second fax, which less detailed, promised photographic evidence, as well as scans of the traveler's time machine operations manual. On October 2nd, uh, sorry, on, on November 2nd, the year 2000, an individual using the forum handle time travel dash O Posted at the Time Travel Institute. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, Rise so, of the tribes. Uh, somebody, somebody posted this on the forum handle, Time Travel Paradoxes. Doop, doop. Wow, Paul's right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Tipler or Kerr was on this world line. By the way, number two is the correct answer. And the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time machine built by Jen. Electric, what? Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. On January 27th, 2001, did you have a thought on that? This, the same user appeared on Art Bell's post to post no. BBS. <laughs> Don't you? Boast to yeah. boast. Wait, sorry. Uh, coast to coast? Coast to coast. I'm sorry. Look, hold on. Look, hold on. I most? was just looking at it. Are there you he gonna, is there. Are you going to look at that stash? Wow. That's Art Bell. Are you going to tell me? You guys. You got to get into this coast to coast thing, man. I'm telling you. No, that's good. I think it's beautiful. Loast to loast. Roast to roast? Yeah, roast to roast. With Dean Martin? (laughs) Just two nice rump roasts. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Just back to back. (laughs) We can see stop talking about food. Yeah, sorry. Okay. (laughs) Greetings. I'm a time traveler from the year 2036. Now I'm on my way home after getting an IBM 5100 computer system from the year 1975. My time machine is a stationary mass temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two top spin dual positive singularities that produce a standard offset tipular sinusoid. And I would be so happy to share pictures of my unit. (laughs) The person claiming to be Jaunty (laughs) Tor... I put John Titor and it's spelled John, it Jaunty John Titor. John Titor. What a John Titor. <laughs> Answered questions and was happy to provide pictures of his unit and describe diagrams of how his machine worked and what it looked like and some excerpts from the manual itself. We will put those in the episode description. Yeah. Um, he also shared a uh, like a symbol of his uh, unit? military. I'll draw his, you a picture his, of like, my his, unit. His military too. unit. His military unit. Like his, uh, his command uh, squadron. I don't know. 
patrol, his vice squad. I don't know what the word would be for it. I think squadrons. His, pretty yeah. Core. His, maybe core. His corp. Uh, yeah. His corpse. Titor claimed that his mission was to find a computer from 1975. Best year ever. Bring it back to the future with him. Back to the future. He decided to stop and see his family along the way. And that's why he was hanging out in 2000 and 2001. Wait, he stopped to see his family like uh, Marty McFly stopped to see his family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's like, hey, guys, you don't know me. I'm from the future. And I just went way back to the past. And I'm stopping here. <laughs> that is odd. You keep, yeah, that accent you keep giving him. Yeah. Oh, Everybody else is hey Southern, guys, but you give man. him like. <laughs> I'm from 2034 and I just thought, oh, shucks. <laughs> he, this, this theory about this IBM computer. Okay. So in 1975, uh, IBM released the first mass produced portable computer, the 5100. And uh, it was, uh, this is off on the website here, an integrated 5-inch CRT monitor up to 64 kilobytes of random access memory. 64 kilobytes. I'm sorry, Andy. I can't do that. <laughs> and the ability to run programs meant for uh, larger, more expensive computers, all in something the size of a briefcase. Uh, in fact, the IBM 5100 was extraordinarily close to becoming the world's very first portable personal computer, a title taken a few short months earlier by the Altair 8800. Uh, but the IBM 5100 was more than just a personal portable computer. It contained a hidden feature that remained undiscovered by the general public for 15 years until the year 2000. So it had some kind of programming aspect the that, that they <laughs> that they stumbled across and they're like, what? So when this guy's like, I went back in time to get myself a 5100 5 million in kilobytes and then people are like dude why would you go there and then these nerds these computer nerds charlie nerds. They're like they're like like man i just let's take a look at this here and then it turned out that there was some kind of neat code that had been neat. shut down john titor described a second civil war in the united states that would result in the fracturing of the country into five autonomous regions Washington, D.C., Jacksonville, Florida would be targeted and taken out by the enemy, leaving Omaha, Nebraska as the U as the new U.S. capital. The Civil War would be long and hard, Charlie, <laughs> uh, beginning in 2004 and ending in 2015. Uh, and with a brief but intense World War Three in the middle of there that would lead to the destruction of the global environment and infrastructure. Good times. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I got to bring this. Oh, sorry. I got to bring this computer back with me to the future to stop the third third World War Three from happening around 2012. Marty. Yeah. The third. <laughs> That's World very War good. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> the third World War Three. Marty. We got to go back <laughs> to the future. This is heavy, Doc. <laughs> uh he also warned fellow forum posters about the increasing threat of Kreutzfeldt Jacobs disease, a <laughs> fatal incurable prison disease that causes the rapid degeneration of the nervous system and is transmitted through bovine products. Mm -hmm. Did you have a thought on there? Okay. Oh. As, for, as for other people's predictions of the future, John Titor confirmed one theory, the Everett Wheeler model of quantum physics uh, also known as the many worlds theory, obviously he said was the correct explanation of the universe. There were in fact, multiple timelines and scenarios, all of which happened in the past. So that's when he originally said, I'm, I'm a time traveling soldier from a future. He didn't say the future because time is man. It's like a stream and just branches. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. On March 24th, 2001, uh, John Titor shared his final message. He never posted again. And to this day, no one knows John Titor's true identity. His true name, his appearance, his location, all of it remains a mystery. Uh, in fact, if he was an actual time traveler, as he claimed, that version of John Titor no longer exists on this timeline. They've tried to like look up people's names. And he was like, oh, I was, I was born in nine, uh, 2021 or something like that. And yeah, or 20. Well, I don't remember what he said he was born, but he was like 30 years old and he came from 2034. So he'd be born in 2004. Yeah. He'd be just a few years younger than you, Greg. No. Oh, what? 
He would Are be, you Charlie's son from the future? He would be 14 years younger. <laughs> I know it. Baby boy. <laughs> come get Papa a kiss. Uh, so no one's ever come forward with evidence that, that stated if this was a hoax. And, and a lot of people are like, if he was from the future, why didn't he tell us about September 11th? And, and one of his main things was like, look, things are going to happen that in my timeline that might not happen in yours and you know, whatever. That so. just sounds, well, sorry. Oh. Yeah, save that. Oof. You Stuff hold that on to that sock. opinion. That's right. Oh. So yeah, that is the tale of time traveler John Tito. John Tito. Sounds like a wrestler. He sure does. John Tito. He comes out with like a big, I got a bucket of syrup. I'm going to drizzle all over your naked body. That's what wrestling. <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> eh, that's, okay, that's one kind of wrestling, anyways. Uh, so Greg, what are we? Greg, what are we drinking? What are we drinking? What are we drinking? Whoa, we're drinking another IPA, there, boys. Ooh. I pee a lot when I drink beer. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We're drinking the Happy Little Brute done by Russell Brewing Company. Oof, seven percent. You guys, you know, you know. <laughs> How much we've talked about me not wanting to drink IPAs anymore. Oh, you're a hoppy guy. But this is this is quite tasty. This is quite tasty. It is good. This doesn't feel heavy or bad at all. The the vibes series, a champagne like IPA named after the driest sparkling wines, fermented with. Ooh, I don't even know how to say that. Sarcor, <laughs> Saccharomyces. Sat. Charomi Swai Twa. Saccharomyces. Flark. Saccharomyces. So we're going to call it Sactois and a fully atten- attenuated with the help of specialized enzymes. Enzymes. Generously dry hopped with a mix of VIC Secret and Idaho 7 with notes of pineapple, passion fruit, papaya, leading themselves to a crisp dry finish. I like the can. Yeah, the can's great. Brewed in BC, Russell Brewing. We basically say that about everything. Yeah. Every can, can. But look at that can. That's how we pick them. Yeah. We pick a good can. I think you said it best in like your first episode is I definitely judge books by their Every covers. Every book yeah. by their cover. Do you guys get a feeling like this is like, this is like a beer designed for like, like a, a five-year-old girl's birthday party? Hooray! Like, hey, 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 I got the, yay. That's you know? exactly actually what it kind of gives <laughs> off. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not. I'm not, obviously I'm not, uh, being like, Hey, You're not advocating you know, I'm not advocating kids alcohol. should drink, but this can really looks like, Oh, I was a happy you know. little brute. I was a happy little brute. Oh, oh yeah. Little happy little brute. I like it. It's good. Oh. Lit Fest, Canada's original nonfiction festival runs from October 17th to 27th, right here in Edmondson, Alberta. Venues across the city will play host to authors and presenters from home and afar, giving their perspectives on true crime, historic mysteries, gender identity, mental health, food culture, and many topics in between. You can see the full list of presenters at litfestalberta.org. There is also a pre-festival series coming October 3 to 5, and it will have a podcast connection. Podcast connections are amazing. Get your tickets today at litfestalberta.org. It's going to be lit. That was my favorite Kermit the Frog song, the podcast connection. <laughs> One day we'll find it, the podcast connection. <laughs> Moving right along. Numero toi. Uh, <laughs> the... What? Duh. 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 Toi. Where do you get toi? Numero duh. All right. We're talking about the Montreal Screwjob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1997 at Survivor Series, a match between the WWF World Champion Bret Hart and rival Shawn Michaels reveals a dark plot of betrayal that changes the way that fans see wrestling. Was it real or was the whole thing a work? Chin music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with the back. Bret, okay, Bret Hart. Bret, the, the hitman. Hit hitman Hart. Hart. The yeah. best there is. From, from Calgary. The best from there Calgary. was. Yeah. The best there ever will be. We start with the beloved Hart family from Calgary, one of the most famous families in the business. Stu Hart starts a gym slash wrestling school, The Dungeon, and also Stampede Wrestling, where Bret Hart gets his start. <laughs> Stampede Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> You're so official sorry, right sorry, now. That so is so good. great. That's, oh. that's where he got his start. That's, that's where the Hart got the start. Stampede Wrestling is eventually bought by Vince McMahon, Vincent K. McMahon, in 1984. And the wow. WWF, which 
included in the sale was the tag team, the Hart Foundation, which was Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Neidhart, also from the Hart Foundation. Oh, wow. Also. Anvil. Yeah, yeah, Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Brett comes to WWF and starts working with Shawn Michaels. They got completely different styles, but they work really well together in the ring. So they're working this program. Everyone's digging it. Mm -hmm. In 1992, Bret Hart beats Ric Flair and becomes the WWF world champion. He's the top guy in the company. Ric Flair was the champion up to that point. What? Is this pre-plane crash? I don't. Yeah, no. It's that's got to be post. It's got to be post. Oh. It's got to be post in ninety two. Wow. Was he? Wasn't he flying the airplane at the time too? <laughs> they wearing that's nothing but a better. wearing nothing but a robe and a smile. Can you imagine a plane crashes into a mountain? The door flies off out of the fiery wreck. It comes Ric Flair. Yeah. It's not the first time you've run through that scenario. I just, I, I, it's, you think that, about it. At that's, night. A, that's a real thing that happened. Like, yeah. He's, there's a reason these legends are legends. <laughs> Meanwhile, over across the pond, not really across any pond, but across the television pond, rival competitor (laughs) WCW starts to gain popularity and starts to steal talent from the WWF. So you get big names like Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, some of the biggest names at WWF. Nash. They leave for WCW. They all sign new contracts and just show up. Oh, yeah. WWF starts, you know, it's a serious war now. Hmm. That was the a- Monday Night Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Bret Hart's contract is about to expire. Uh, first, WCW offers him a, a contract. Vince McMahon and WWF counter with a much better multi co- multi year contract. Reportedly, one point five million dollars a year for twenty years, Ooh. which is huge in a time when the top stars were only making seven hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's. That's like quite the step up. Yeah, that's that's and that's for 20 insane. years for 20 years. Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels still having their feud. It starts to boil over and real. They start to really get under each other's skin, bringing real life things into their feud. You know, they're not happy about it. Right. They start taking real life shots at each other in their live promos on TV. And they end up uh, boils over and they end up in a real life fist fight in the locker room with WWE or sorry, with WCW on the rise. WWF starts losing the TV ratings that uh, it leads them to not be able to fulfill the, the 20 year $1.5 million a year contract that was originally offered to Brett. Obviously he's got to go where the money is. He decides to sign with WCW. The idea is that (laughs) Brett Hart would finish up his run with WWF at the 1997 survivor series pay-per-view where he'd wrestle Shawn Michaels and ultimately lose the match. That's, that's just the way things go. You know, if you're leaving the company, you got to drop the title. You got to drop the strap. Yeah. Fair enough. The next guy coming up. It's tradition. Bret Hart didn't want to lose the match. He had reason. Uh, another aspect of his contract signing was that he had um, reasonable creative control of his character written into his new contract. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Are you suggesting that wrestling is scripted? It's, it's not about the sport. It's about the show. Okay. However, this was not a thing that was really brought to light at the time. So it wasn't it wasn't anything that the, the John Q public didn't really know too much about it. My mom knew this. This was like the first thing she'd say when I watched wrestling. She's like, you know, of course. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You keep that's for opinion time. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's not where that's not where the brilliance of this of the yeah. the spectacle lies. No, it's not. And like you said, real life is fake. Wrestling is real. Hashtag. No. Hashtag what? You've got to say something <laughs> Sorry. after that. Hashtag knowledge. Sorry, I, I did that backwards. <laughs> Tras- Bob. Hashtag, 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 hashtag the more you know. The hashtag real life is uh, fake and wrestling <laughs> is, is real. real. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Is that a thing? Oh. Anyways, so Bret Hart had reasonable creative control of his character written into that new contract, which he was under for the last 60 days of his WWF run. So, And with two wrestlers still not seeing eye to eye, he didn't want to lose to Shawn Michaels until he felt he had his respect like in the back in the locker room Mm. they're they're really clashing less than 24 hours away from his last match Bret Hart is still refusing to lose the match and growing uh, suspicious that Vince McMahon might might try to screw him over Mm. so the day of the match November 9th 1997 there's a film crew following around Bret Hart to get documentary footage of his last match. Cause this is a big thing. Everybody knows about it. Uh, I think it was, well, it was beyond the mat. I think it was beyond the mat. Uh, and it was, it was a big, it was a big thing at the time. And when it came out, because 
that kind of stuff, which just wasn't really known about backstage sort of. So this, the whole day, the second Brett gets to the arena, there's, he gets wired up, he gets mic'd up and there's a camera crew following him around the whole time. They get footage of everything that goes down. Vince and Brett meet one more time to try to, to work things out, go over the, the plans for the match. Um, he said, like I said, Brett's wired for sound. He still wants to leave the match with the title losing by qualification, but then show up next night on TV and relinquish the title wave a big goodbye and see you later. <laughs> um, at the time, Vince McMahon seems to agree to this. It seems okay. Things, mm-hmm. things are going to be all right. It's amicable. Now the referee at this match is an old friend. Like he goes way back, goes back with, with Bret Hart has refed a lot of his matches. Earl Hebner. He's a, uh, he's a, already at the time. He's a, he's an older guy, an older gentleman who's been refereeing matches for a very long, very long, uh, Hebner, the ref. <laughs> That's what they called him. <laughs> Old Hebner, the refner. <laughs> so on his way down to the ring, Earl Hebner gets pulled aside and ordered to call the match for Shawn Michaels. When Shawn Michaels puts the move, the sharpshooter on Bret Hart, oh. which is big because the sharpshooter is Bret Hart's finishing move. Mm-hmm. This is a big move. So then we get to the match. They start fighting before the ring, the, before the bell even rings, they're fighting around the ringside. They finally get the match started inside the ring. The bell rings. They go for 10 to 15 minutes for Shawn Michaels gets Bret Hart into his own finishing move, the sharpshooter. Vince McMahon is standing ringside and starts yelling for the ref to ring the bell. Earl Hebner, the ref, reluctantly, ultimately makes the call and the bell is rang. Even though Bret Hart is he's not submitting, he's not tapping out, and he's already halfway out of the hold. He's, he's fighting his way out of it. Mm-hmm. But just with force, because he knows. He, he, he has an idea. He figures. The bell rings. Earl Hebner, the ref, takes off. Allegedly, Shawn Michaels tell him, tells him, get out of here. You got to go. Go. In a documentary, in a new, a new documentary series, or there's an interview with, with Earl Hebner where he, he describes having his car packed and ready to go mm-hmm. to leave the arena. So he, rang, he called that match. The bell rang. And he got the fuck out of the arena, yeah. jumped in his car, and took off. A pissed off Bret Hart stands in the middle of the ring and writes out with his fingers in the air the letters WCW so that the camera can see. And uh, he lets a huge gob of spit fly in Vince McMahon's face. <laughs> then continues to trash the announcer's booth before being led to the back of the arena. Now, that's the story. That's that's how it plays out on TV, right? Now, in the back, two different writers, or a bunch of different writers, actually, now that I, look, I looked a little bit more into it, and met three or four different writers say that they all pitched the idea of this double cross to Vince McMahon in the, in the writer's room. It was, it was kept really quiet for the fact that, like, if you know, then you can say that you knew, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't know, then, you know, you're safe. Shawn Michaels swears that he had nothing to do with the plan. Brett goes back into the uh, back into the locker room, you know, and he's he's starting to pack up and get out of there. Uh, Vince McMahon shows up in his in his locker room. He goes to see Brett. Brett takes about as much of Vince McMahon as he can. He says he's, he goes to have a shower. He says, you look, you don't want to be here when I get out of here. Right. Like he comes out of a shower. Vince McMahon is still standing there just waiting for him. Going to talk it out. Yeah. Brett takes as much as he can of Vince. But at one point, he goes down to tie his shoes. He's about ready to get out of there, and he just, that's it. He comes up with an uppercut. Boom. Punches Vince McMahon in the face, and it's lights out. Brett goes over, picks up his stuff, goes over to Sean, thanks, thanks him for the match, and Sean Michaels apparently burst out crying. Yeah. Just boom. He, he loses his shit. He didn't admit to it, but allegedly he was in on it. Very few people knew about the plan, but mostly it was Vince and Sean. Bret Hart leaves and begins his run in WCW. The next night on Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon goes on, comes on camera, on camera, and he makes Bret Hart seem like the bad guy who didn't want to do what he was told. Vince used the screw job to become the ultimate. If if if, if people, most people, anybody watch wrestling in the nineties, they remember Vincent K. McMahon as Mister McMahon. You know, the guy who likes to fire people on TV, the TV character, not you're, you're fired. fired, not the backstage owner of the company, right? Not yeah. the, not the announcer, not the CEO, just the Vince McMahon versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, that whole thing, right? Yep. 
Mr. McMahon. This event exposed the real life backstage politics of professional wrestling to the fans. And regardless of who knew, who knew what and who did what, um, they managed to change. They changed the business overnight. Previously, nobody knew about this kind of stuff. It was just, just the corny, cheesy stuff that happened on stage. And it was great. They, they took down the fourth wall and, uh, you know, like I said, changed the business overnight. Mm. The legacy of the Montreal screw job is that no one really knows if it was a screw job or not. Was it a work? Was it kayfabe, which is, you know, wrestling speak for real life? Did Vince McMahon screw Bret Hart? Did Bret Hart screw Bret Hart? Or was nobody screwed? Was Bret Hart in on it the whole time? <clears throat> Some things to think about. If Bret Hart had creative control in his contract, then Vince would have been in breach of contract if it all went down as it did on TV. If it goes down on TV, there's grounds for suing, right? You mm-hmm. can make a legal case. Mm, yeah. And go after the the millionaire, billionaire company at the time, right? If it wasn't a work, then you've got a production crew who zooms in the the second that Bret Hart just lets a huge gob go in Vincent McMahon's That's pretty, face. Pretty can- <sighs> yeah. Right on. And there's a, a classic shot of Vince McMahon wipe, wiping the gob of spit out of his eye, right? Also, the documentary crew, uh, how big of a coincidence is it that there's this hanging, they happen to have them mic'd up, happen to be hanging around all day long, get all this footage, all this behind the scenes stuff, right? And uh, but why would the camera stay on him when he's standing in the middle of the ring and he's signing out the letters of the biggest competitor to the company? That was still aired. That was that was shown on TV. That was, well pay-per-view right mm-hmm. so why, why why would they show that if it wasn't if it wasn't scripted you know mm-hmm. they could cut to a shot of anyone else they could cut to a shot of uh sean michaels with the title well it's kind of like the when jerry lawler had his heart attack and they just kind of cut exactly cut or the whole thing or like owen hart <clears throat> falls from the rafters yeah, yeah. they're they're not showing it they're well, like just just crowd keep, shots or just get yeah, out whatever's of in the opposite there. corner yeah who knows Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I've seen a couple documentaries, and there have been many. There have been many. <clears throat> are, are you ready to start your opinion on this? No, no, no you go right ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, okay. I'm just saying I've seen a few documentaries. That's it. Yeah, let's go ahead and share your thoughts. I on believe that, that does bring up that yeah. does bring us to we're an opinion, opinion time. time. Go, go for it. Go opinion for it. Time? Yeah. Cool. Opinion time. Opinion time. Hey everybody, it's opinion time. Opinion time. Opinion time. Hey everybody, it's opinion time. Nobody cares, but it's opinion time. <laughs> um, I don't know if he was screwed over. But uh, to, 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 to speak to his contract, it was like said that they, before it was actually signed, Vince McMahon wasn't able to like uphold his end of the deal, so they never made it. That's probably why there was never anything to happen after that, because he really didn't have creative control of his own story. Yeah, I guess if they, it was not a, le- a legit binding contract, then there would yeah. be nothing to uphold. Exactly. But also, then again, like uh, Shawn Michaels is a greasy little bastard, so. So I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Man, though, that's a great story, though. And if you have creative control and if you're a good storyteller, that's a great story. Mm-hmm. You know, like that whole thing is playing out in a very kind of Shakespearean fashion. Like well, even to we're like, exposing all the way up the, the hierarchy of the. Well, even to like continue it for Bret Hart now, because mm-hmm. even he like maintains it's like, yeah, I got fucked over. Yeah. And that's he, everything that, that he says his, that at every that's single his interview. character, though. No, he's like I legit well, he's got past, fucked he, over. He's much past his character now. Yeah. How how do you even know? I mean, he's still still he's still selling. That's, that's uh, what I'm saying. Like Bret Hart t shirts and stuff, if right? It, if it was him who came up with that idea, then they're, they're just playing it really really well. Then the, kudos for them for the, keeping that's it. That's a that's a legacy decision. Huh? That's 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 what I'm saying. You know that if he had just kind of if it had gone quietly as according to the official plan, we wouldn't be talking about it years later. But guys, yeah. you know mm. you know. And he just happened to be all mic'd up and the camera caught it all like oh. it immediately when cut away. You can tell when something actually goes, goes wrong. wrong. See, that that's why this Bret Hart thing feels and different. they cut away or you can tell. Yeah. As someone who's watched for a long time, you can tell when something goes wrong because if, if, if somebody stops. hits a spot and like just say something hits and they look like they're hurt 
and you see the referee run over to them and check. They check like a hundred times. Are you okay? This is over. This is not like that's, but that's the real life. Signal. That's in real life. That's yeah, like the, if something no, is really fucked up. They're like, yeah. nope, this is not continuing. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, I, not knowing enough about wrestling to have a real strong informed opinion on this, just from the outside, from a, from a storytelling point of view, I'm like, man, this is great. This is saga building stuff. If he stays in character, that's the classic, like, uh, you know, you, 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 when you commit to something like that, you stay in character all the time commit to the bit, you know, you commit to the bit. Yeah. And like he did WCW for what? I mean, everyone knows him he as Brett the Hitman Hart. He did not have a very uh, successful WCW yeah. run. Yeah. But that was because of bad managing. Did he go back there. to WWF? Eventually, <clears throat> WWF let him in the Hall of Fame. See, there's another the thing frame. there, right? Like yeah. if he if he really was the uh, sworn enemy of Vince McMahon, and yet somehow he gets let back in. And when Vince McMahon was on TV the next day, did he have a bruise or anything on his face? He had a black eye. But it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, they could have make done makeup. They mm-hmm. could have done that in makeup, you know. It's just a good story. It's a great, and that's that's why I'm like, that stinks. <clears throat> it's a legend. It's a high heaven. It's a legendary story, and yeah, it's man. it's so it's well documented. Montreal Screwjob. It's got yeah. a fucking awesome name. Yeah, and it happened in Montreal. That's great. Whether Canadian whether Convention. it's I love it. legitimate or a complete work, yeah. it still changed the business overnight. Yeah. I'm making it personal. No, he was he was part of a whole wave of of guys that were doing that sort yeah. of thing, where it was like not just a cartoon character kind of thing. Yeah, that really fits in the narrative. Is what I'm saying there. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but what, yeah. what are your what are your what are your feelings on this? Then I mean, I think it works both ways. Mm-hmm. I think it works as a total work, where maybe he knew about it, or maybe he knew something about it. It would work like that, but. Also, I mean, it wasn't the double cross. It wasn't the first time a, a legitimate double cross like that. I mean, obviously in, in, in fun wrestling storylines, there's always a double cross, mm-hmm. right? But in this, there are other earlier, if you read like old wrestling magazines, these kind of things happened all the time anyway. Like not all the time, but it's not unheard of, right? There's previous cases of, of that sort of thing happening. Yeah. Like a wrestler in the back, uh, before he comes out, he doesn't want to lose the match. So he has someone, uh, a friend of his bite him on the chest and make bite marks. Right. And so he covers up where that is and he comes out for the match. And so when the bell rings, he gets that other wrestler and they're right in front of each other. So the ref can't see anything. And then he pretends to take something and then he goes, ah, yeah. He gets he gets caught up in a hold and then he, you know, boom, he gets he gets released and he's got these bite marks. Yeah. Nobody saw the bite marks previous to, so they don't know that it was done yeah. in the back, right? Dirty biz. So it's not unheard of that uh maybe it maybe it was a double cross. Maybe, you yeah. know, he uh, Vince Vince McMahon would have been worried that if Bret Hart was supposed to show up the next night on, on TV and just rel- relinquish the title, what if he doesn't? Mm-hmm. What if he just screws off to WCW and shows up next night on their show with his title? Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fascinating story. Yeah. Yeah, good call, man. Yeah, the Montreal, Montreal Screwjob. Yeah, yeah, not to be confused with the Omaha Screwjob. <laughs> or the Edmonton Screwjob. Yeah. Uh, AKA the stranger. If you're familiar <laughs> with that maneuver, what was the first thing? Oh, John Titor. John Titor. Okay, so, John uh, Titor. So, yeah, uh, I will start with Charlie here. Charlie, do you think the John Titor was a traveler from 2034? And that, and bearing in mind, I did, I wasn't able to show you guys, but he he did. He had pictures of his manual. He put up pictures of his time machine. People were like, "Holy!" He actually included this, and I other people fact checked his story about IBM, this computer. And they were like, that is a really interesting thing that it was like cut out and it would actually work for this weird. And so this whole thing started because he called into coast to coast and he happened to choose art bell of all people. He's yeah. like, he's like, actually time travel's real. I'm from 2034. Now, some of my favorite clips of coast to coast are the ones that Sorry, post to post. I think it's called, that's just a little joke. Sorry. That is really ridiculous. I hope that's as yeah, funny as I so, think it is. I, yeah. yeah, make me so angry. <laughs> I knew, I knew. Oh, anyway, sorry. I'm, my bad. I'm sorry. Anyway. The best part of Coast to Coast are the callers that call in and 
there's that bit of believability. There's somewhere you're just like, all right, well, this person's just whacked up. Yeah. You, know? you sure this is crazy? Mm. But there are some, there's a, a sliver, a fraction where you're like, I don't know. I don't know. Totally. And if you're actually a time traveler and you're like, I, I can back this up. Like, you know what? You know where I'm going to go, where I can go that people are going to believe me. Yeah. You just got to find your audience, the right audience. Yeah. The coast to coast audience. Yeah. Mm. It's wild. And he, he did what he said he would do. He put up pictures. Mm-hmm. People have looked over this and they're like, uh, but and like, <laughs> I like this is drawn on the back of a yeah. cereal box. But he also, he was very clear. He's like, he's like, I'm also a soldier. Like I'm not, if you, if you, if you, yeah, stuff, if you picked just the person that drove a car it, right? and asked them to explain how an engine worked, they'd be like, oh, I, I don't I know. just turn this thing. Yeah. And it goes, but he's like, here's the manual. Here's the, here it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know, Greg, what do you think? I don't know. I think there's just too many stories out there. Like the similar, too, too many similar stories out there. Sorry. Right. Uh, the whole like, oh, I'm from a future that may be. Well, mm. sorry, dude. Why don't you be a little bit more definitive on that? But that's, you're right. Because, you but that's, that's, but that's, that's the, 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 like the, many, the many worlds, but okay. Sure. The I, multiverse. I, I don't know much about paradoxes or anything with that, but if we come back in time, we are in his timeline. So it doesn't matter where he goes. He's, we're in his world. Up until that point, but that would be where the fragments happen. Him coming back. No, him coming back creates this world of like, we are in his. Oh, you mean he traveled back in his, so we are in his. Yeah. And if it, if it, if it it remains his, even if he travels back in it is what you're saying. Yeah. And he's going to be traveling to the future of like where he left off in the past. Back to the future. Mm -hmm. Back to no. the future where right. we love So we're just gonna like I said, I I'm not, I don't know paradoxes, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. Couldn't fucking tell you my ass for my elbow if it was like a quasar or something else. I, I just nope, I don't have any You're not yeah. buying it. No. Nope. Not into it. You know, if you really wanted to prove that there was time travel, you would have showed up at Stephen Hawking's little time traveler party. And if you weren't gonna Absolutely. do that, then you know, didn't do it. Because as, as great as Art Bell is, if somebody really wanted to prove it. That's, that's oh, yeah. someone like that. Yeah. And These, you said, you said earlier, he's like, well, he admitted he was, he wasn't a scientist. Well, man, if I'm sending someone back to the past and I want someone to make sure that like, I want the world to know that time travel is a yeah. real thing. I'm sending like that top guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, sorry about dude, you're not coming back, but make sure the world knows. And you, you would, well, it's hard to say a Stephen Hawking guy is, is, a, is a strange exception, but you could find someone and be like, look, I don't know how to do this, but you can verify my story. Like I can, I could take, yeah, if he comes say, back I wouldn't in time rely, and shows it to an expert. I would rely on, not that I'm saying like people are unreliable or soldiers are unreliable. Just, you know, I would, I would grab someone who knew exactly what they were talking about instead of like, Oh, here's just my plans to the ship. I mean, yeah. Cause I would just be like, you said like a, someone driving a car doesn't know how an internal combustion engine works, but it's like, Oh, here's the manual to my but car. I can turn mm-hmm. it on and get there. Yeah. I, to be honest, I mean, I like that approach myself. I'm like, he, he's like, he's like, Look, I don't have to defend this. Like this is this is what it is. Oh yeah, no, it totally and, just against. And here's like, here's the manual, and he's, he's like done. he's like here's pictures of it. Here's Figure the it manual. Yeah, no. He's like I don't know how it works, but if you guys want to take a look, and these are granny pictures. We'll we'll have them in the episode description. We'll have them on the Instagram. Um, I, yeah, man. The, the, I I think clearly this was a this was a hoax, but Hoaxy. but man, there's some. This no, is, it's 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 this is bullshit, but it's good bullshit. It's great, and there's things in this. I'm like this. It is impossible to be like, well, who know? Five hundred years from now, they invent time travel out of something that we have no comprehension yeah, of. Yeah, I hope you I'm don't wrong. even know. That's, yeah, you know. be awesome to be wrong. Yeah, but I mean, that's we we talked before about uh, the Mandela effect, and it's like, it's like, uh, I mean, that's what this whole thing revolves around. Is like people traveling around, and coming back, and grabbing a shitty old computer and then going back to the future. Mm-hmm. And yes, it's like, like they, Commodore they, 64. They, they accidentally, I had one of those. you know, they accidentally branch it off and it becomes something else. Yeah. Yeah. How were you born in 1998 and you had a Commodore 64? <clears throat> My brother got a Commodore 64 <laughs> and uh, I just ended up inheriting it when he grew out of it. I'll never understand how you have so much eighties knowledge okay. and yet, so my, my brother and sister are both like a decade and some years older than I am. That explains a whole lot. My mom is, uh, well, she was born in 1950. She's going to be 69 this year. Anyway. Well, hey, I know you want to close out the episode, but I got one more little thing here. Oh, just a little, what do we got over here? Just recently, just got a little bag. We went into have a little Banff vacation. 
and we hit a Banff sweet shop and we found something for a little bit. Uh, we found these that we couldn't resist. Oh, I don't want it. I'm not going to touch them so that I don't get Thank you. greasy, greasy fingers Thank on them. Thank you for that. I appreciate Just that. Pour I, them out into the middle I of the I felt odd. We've got little. What the hell? Okay, sorry. Before you touch them, okay, we, let's. This is going to float on out there. Okay, let's just. Little fizzy UFOs. We got little fizzy UFO tasters. Those. Are you sure this isn't something you throw in the dishwasher to like. No, it's not a Tide Pod, silly. Okay, okay. So we got. I brought back oh. a couple of these little fizzy UFOs for us to do a little tasty. Wow, they're green on this side. This is amazing. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Did you take a picture of them? I did, yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers, UFO cheers. Cheers. Like a communion wafer. Are you sure this isn't a side pod? You did put it in your mouth, right? You didn't trick us into doing this? It's stuck to the roof of my mouth. It's sticking to my mouth. Legitimately. It's not bad. It's like a communion wafer with that. Uh, with pop rocks on the pop inside. Rocks on the inside. Yeah. I like that. That that was a communion wafer with pop rocks <laughs> yeah. inside of it. Fizzy UFOs. Tastes like blue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Candy from what way back. <laughs> Tastes like blue. What Tastes is like blue. odd. Stick it in your face hole. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tastes like blue. That's the 90s right there. Just extreme blue. Okay, well, blue is associated with raspberry, right? Like a blue raspberry. Blue raspberry. You're like, oh man, this raspberry tastes yep, blue. I get that. The only reason that the blue, that raspberry is the color blue, is because the cherry is red. It's already good. It's already got a color. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know if I liked that candy, Charlie, but uh, <laughs> I'm okay with it. It's left yeah. a strange residue in my mouth. It really did. Have the texture of a communion wafer. Yes, I'm not even no, it definitely like tastes. It definitely yeah, tastes like a. Communion. And I had I had one in Banff, and I was like, oh, I got to bring. These. Yeah, <laughs> thank I gotta, you. Andrew I got to bring these, these to the guys. <laughs> oh. I got to show them. Oh, thank you, Charlie, for sharing that. Oh boy, that that totally made up for the sour milk earlier. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> even playing field. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you so much for listening. We love doing this uh, once again. We we really do, and and uh, it, we're we're glad that we have the chance and the opportunities to do that. You can listen to all of our episodes on it's conspiracy podcast dot uh, com, and you can find links to our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook merchandise, uh, uh, Charlie's website, Old Man Design, yeah, Old Man Design dot com. Come on down if you need some designs. We'll get you sorted. <laughs> Um, I, I always mean to mention this. If you have an idea for a theory that you'd like to hear us discuss or uh, an, uh, an alternative account, legend, myth, blah, blah, blah just uh, let us know. And we, blah, blah, blah. yeah, we've had some, we've had some really good ones um, suggested and uh, yeah, that, that's also that let us great. know if we miss anything. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, oh, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, we will be back uh, with uh, episode three on October 1st. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Subscribe, rate, review, blah, blah, blah. Get all the things. And, yeah, and take Do care. Do it. Tell your friends. Bye. Bye. testing what are we 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 testing